Hi friends, Amanda here. Thanks for joining me for today's mandatory activity. We're making some soaps today. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold, hold these, these up, up while I'm talking, talking about, about it. Um, <laughs> I went down the, the Pinterest rabbit hole because I found a picture of an amethyst soap and just kind of fell in love. Um, so I set out to kind of figure out <laughs> how this was done. Um, and this was the result and I am super happy with it. It, it was not very hard. It's got all these like really cool facets like on the inside. Um, it didn't take very long. It didn't need a ton of supplies. It smells really, really good. And when you make these, like you're carving them basically out of a block of soap and you end up with all these little shards of, of like smaller little amethysts. So I decided why not take those shards and make like a, a little amethyst Kind of garden soap. I'm not sure um, the utility here because I feel like it's going to be really hard to use, but uh, <laughs> but it was it was a good way to use the leftovers, leftover um, soap base and the leftover uh, little carved bits. I'm going to show you how I did it. I also I'll provide some links for you. Um, most of the stuff you can get from Amazon, but I don't think the pricing is great. This is using uh, Stevenson's Melt and Pour Clear Soap, which is usually what I choose because it's like a low sweat glycerin soap and it's easy to work with. For Amazon, I don't know why they're selling two pound blocks for like $18, which is twice what it should be. So I'm gonna give you the link um, just so you know what you're looking for in case you can find it somewhere else for less. But also I would suggest um, Wholesale Supplies Plus and I'll put a link in there too. It's not an affiliate. Um, but if you order $25 or more, there's free shipping. And I think their melt and pour, uh, soap base is like eight fifty something like that. So, um, you're halfway to free shipping if you, if you go that route. I'll suggest some soap coloring from both Amazon and Wholesale Supplies Plus. So you can kind of, um, gauge, you know, where it makes most sense for you to make a purchase if you wanted to try this project. All right. So let's make some crystal soaps. Let's get to it. Okay, I'm gonna record a voiceover for this video. I determined that when I'm making soap and trying to talk, I just, I end up screwing up <laughs> what I'm doing because I can't concentrate. So uh, so I recorded this and I'm just gonna, gonna kind of speak uh, as we go here. We are using this Stevenson's Melt and Pour Crystal Soap Base. And so you just kind of need to break the seal, sort of, you know, loosen the sides. Um, so you can kind of flip it over and pop it out. You can see I got mine from Brambleberry online. Now I have a crinkle cutter, so that's what I prefer to use to cut my melt and pour, but it's not um, a supply that you need to go buy to do this project. You can just as easily cut your melt and pour soap with um, a regular kitchen knife. And uh, what you're really going for is cutting these into about one inch cubes because we're going to melt them in the microwave and um, the smaller they are, the easier they melt. Okay, so this is a two pound block of soap and I probably cut about three quarters of it into our initial set of cubes. I'm taking the remaining quarter and cutting them into kind of longer blocks because uh, these are what I'm going to use to make our kind of initial shards for the soap. You can see here too, I've also switched to a regular straight sided uh, cutter and not the crinkle cutter um, so that, you know, the pieces I'm getting are, um, you know, they're not wavy. So there's no real rhyme or reason here. I'm just cutting these up into kind of smallish pieces, um, making sure they're not uniform. We want them to be sort of as organic looking as possible. So different sizes, different shapes. You can see I'm kind of grabbing piles of them and cutting those in half. Um, these are the little bits that are gonna end up being the facets on the inside of our crystal soap. So um, that's why I'm making them so small so that I can kind of cluster them together and have them catch the light in, in different places. Bird on a tree. So here's a close-up of just the kind of variety we're going for. Some of them are long, some of them are square, some of them are rectangular, um, but you know a decent uh, assortment of shapes. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. 
from up here. Okay, so I took the pieces that we cubed that were crinkle cut and I melted those down in the microwave in 30 second bursts until it was liquidy. And I have this, um, this actually it's an ice cube tray. I use it for, um, for cube shaped soaps, but uh, you can use just a regular ice cube tray. So for colorant, I'm going to start with um, this mica that I have from Nurture, Nurture Soap. It's um, iris purple. They sent me a little sample. Um, so I thought this would be a good opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of this iris purple mica into my melted melt and pour um, and go ahead and incorporate that completely. And this is sort of, uh, you know, using a mica is not necessary. I will, um, I'll post some micas for you in addition to regular uh, soap dye, but micas are just, they're pretty. Like they, you, you get kind of a metallic sort of sheen. Uh, particularly in melt and pour, just sort of the way it dries. So that's what I prefer. Um, but you can see a little bit went a long way. It's it's really nice and purple here, just with that one little sprinkle. And here's just close up. You can kind of see the, the swirling that happens as you're uh, mixing the mica into the melted soap. It's sort of a pearlescent. And now I'm just going to pour uh, a portion of this um, iris purple soap into one of these cube molds and sort of set that aside for a second and I have a darker mica um, that is this one here um, it's a dark scarlet you can see it says soap dye I got like a little pack of an assortment of micas uh, from Amazon and so this was one of the the darker purples so uh, I'm just going to take the remainder of this light purple and sprinkle in some of the dark purples so I can have multiple shades of purple to work with and so as I'm mixing in this second soap color, um, the soap starts to kind of cool off and um, harden up on me pretty quickly here. So I'm just sort of rolling with it. Um, you know, you could, I could, you know, put it back in the microwave and remelt it, but um, I'm of the opinion that, you know, another texture of soap might be kind of fun. So um, I'm just going to kind of leave this sort of gelatinous blob and, uh, and pour that in. I shouldn't really say we're going to pour that in. We're kind of we're, we're past the stage of it being pourable, but we're going to we're going to cram it in. Um just sort of kind of ladle it in um to the cube mold and um squish it down with the edge of my spoon um as much as possible, but um you'll see later it ends up being kind of cool cuz it's sort of has a lot of bubbles and texture and stuff that that end up being mixed in, so um, ended up being kind of a good choice. Small. We can sit together. It's okay, so now I melted the rest of the cubes and I'm going to add my fragrance, which is also from Nurture Soap. It's called Awaken. Um, and it's a really nice kind of a lemongrass uh, fragrance. But so this is the what was left of, I'm sorry, I'm a little out of frame. Oh, there we go. This was what was left of the rest of the cubes that we cut with a crinkle cutter. So this is not um, the little shards. This is this is the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the appropriate amount of fragrance. And you should always check your, your fragrance oil, your supplier, to find out what the safe fragrance load is based on how much soap you're using. Um, so that is what I'm doing here, putting in the maximum amount of skin safe fragrance for this particular um, amount of soap. And I'm going to mix that in until it's fully incorporated, kind of scraping the sides of the bowl to get any uh, sort of crusted up soap off the sides and uh, mixed in. And then I'm going to squirt it here with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, a 91% rubbing alcohol, which I have in this little squeezy bottle. And that just helps pop all the bubbles because all of the agitation from stirring has created a, a fair number of bubbles. So you'll see um, you'll see me sort of popping bubbles throughout the process and I think there's like one more little nugget of soap in there that I'm trying to get melted but um, this is starting to look pretty good. So I'm using my uh, tall and skinny silicone loaf mold uh, which is just from Amazon so I'll link that in case you are in need of one but you really don't need to buy one you could just as easily use an empty milk carton um, you know, cut off one of the long sides and line it with freezer paper and that would be perfectly fine for a mold for this purpose. So I'm just pouring in my melt and pour on the bottom layer here 
um, putting in a, about an inch. You and me, we meant to be in the great so I'm just get this out of the way and grab our pitcher of beautiful little shards and I'm going to add to it some of this super sparkles um, from Nurture Soap which is sort of a very very fine cosmetic grade uh, Enviro glitter and I'm just gonna I used a popsicle stick to to pick up the super sparkles and now I'm just mixing them in um, just to kind of coat each of the the little crystals um, I just when I had an opportunity for glitter I took it but you can see how nice and sparkly they are now super sparkles are super sparkly So I actually realized here that I was going to run out of soap because my, my tall skinny mold is taller than I thought it was. So I went ahead and cut up a, a second two pound block, but obviously you can make a smaller batch. Um, and here is soap coloring. This is liquid soap coloring. The color is grape. Um, this is also from Amazon and just using um, a couple of drops of this. It's super, super easy to use, particularly with melt and pour soap. mixing that color in the um, the soap that we've already poured in the mold is uh, firming up so um, you can kind of see that there is um, a like a skin on top but it's very liquidy underneath now I'm going to grab my little um, super sparkly shards and kind of just push them in with my popsicle stick um, somewhat randomly so you, you really want to make sure you've let that first layer of soap cool um, otherwise when you drop these in they'll just they'll melt so um, it's there sort of a fine line it needs to be li liquidy enough that it can um, it can hold them it can sort of pierce the skin and they can go and sit in the liquidy part but not so hot that they're going to melt away and you'll lose all your shards move this to the side and grab our purple cubes um, and you have to kind of do the same sort of thing here you break the seal and I just was able to get this to release by pushing it from the bottom uh, right out of the mold um, and and the, the sort of lumpy weird darker purple ones uh, as well I'm going to do the same thing here that we did with the um, the clear shards and I'm just going to take this guy and chop it up with a straight edge knife um, and just again going for kind of random shapes um, of smaller purple shards. I'm going to do the same thing with um, the, the weird dark blobby ones um, and they kind of crumbled apart a little bit like the texture is definitely very very different. Um, but I mentioned before, you know, that's kind of cool. Like, I thought that was really interesting. So even though the soap sort of seized, I ended up with um, what was sort of a, a pretty looking little piece that already sort of starts to look like gemstone. Take a step back to see the truth. And you end up with a, a nice assortment of both dark and light little purple pieces. So going back to the mold, I'm going to spritz this down with some more rubbing alcohol, this time not to pop bubbles, to, but to make it easier for the next layer of soap to adhere. And you can see the soap's kind of chunky. It's been cooling off a little bit, so I'm not worried about melting the shards that are already in there. And I've got some melted purple as well, so um, giving that one more stir before I start pouring in uh, the purple. zoom me in nice and close here so you know it's got a, a fairly light layer of purple um, but I'm gonna go ahead and sort of make sure that most of those white shards are covered up and then uh, zoom you in nice and close so you can see I'm just sort of gonna randomly and somewhat haphazardly <laughs> drop in the uh, the purple ones so mixtures of light and dark and uh, 
and a fairly thick layer of these. Meant to be in the great outdoors. And so my, uh, my, my melted purple soap has been cooling the whole time I've been putting these little purple shards in. Um, so I'm going to come back on top with uh, a pour of the purple, but I'm not worried about it being too hot to melt these shards because I know it's been kind of sitting on my table, um, cooling off for the last few minutes. Forever free. You and me. Meant to be. So here's where I decided that this is going to you know, be the base of the soap. and. I thought it might be fun to experiment a little bit and try to make some um, some gray, thinking it might look like um, you know kind of stone like a stone layer on the bottom. Um, again, this is obviously not something you need to do, but I was in play mode here and enjoying myself, so I mixed a little bit of gray into what was left of my dark purple and made it even sort of a darker, smoky, metallic purple. Something. And so I'm taking my spoon here. I'm just kind of breaking up the little skin on the top of the soap. Um, just because I didn't want the, the gray layer to look like a flat line up against the purple layer. Um, and it had dried pretty pretty flat. So I'm just kind of uh, breaking it up here so that when I pour it in, it'll, it'll have some little crevices to, to fall into. And again, spraying with some rubbing alcohol to make sure the layers have uh, the best adhesion possible. And then going ahead and pouring the, the gray sparkly bits in. And this is very satisfying. So I'm going to pull you in close so you can get a good look. Okay, so I'm just going to glove up here, um, mostly because I just don't want to leave fingerprints on the outside of my soap, um, even though these are, you know, soaps I'm going to keep for myself, um, and sort of a, a trial batch, I still just, I don't want them to be all cloudy and covered in fingerprints. But here we go for the moment of truth. Ta-da! So you can really see the, uh, the facets or the, the little clear parts sticking out of the top. Um, I think the effect was really uh, compelling. And as we slice into it, you'll see you can really get the same effect from uh, the light purple and the dark purple shards that we put um, in that secondary layer. So knowing that I'm going to need to carve these, I really am just cutting them into kind of cube shapes, thinking more about what size I want the base to be, um, because obviously it'll taper up towards the top. And I don't want them all to be the same size, so I'm kind of cutting various you know, rectangles and cubes. Um, obviously, if you've got a smaller batch, um, you can choose to do you know smaller smaller sizes or little guest soaps, um, something significantly smaller than these. These are probably, if I do this again, I'll probably make them slightly smaller because they're, they're really, really big. So all that's left here is kind of the, the most fun part. You just sort of start carving away at the sides uh, until you end up with something that you think looks good. So I've got a little cup in front of me. I'm just cutting off the pieces and, and tossing them in that cup. Um, and you know rotating it as i go and stopping to take a look and um you know really like you know getting to sculpt the soap uh which was super fun so i'll speed this up for you and um and then we can talk about what we do with those scraps and you also see as i start getting to a, a shape that is more sort of um refined i will grab um the vegetable peeler that I use to clean up my bars of soap and kind of get a, a lot more um, sort of smaller edges. Um, and that's kind of how I finished off each of them. So here comes the vegetable peeler now. It's clear to see from up here the world seems small. We can sit together. 
and as I'm finishing up this first soap, I'm deciding, you know, I really need to take, um, take a look at the bottom because it shouldn't be completely flat. Um, it certainly wouldn't be if it were occurring in nature. And so I sort of, um, unleveled it, <laughs> took a, a big slice off the bottom and, um, you know, kind of some other little bits off of the, the corner so that when you sit it down, it doesn't really sit evenly anymore. You and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks pretty good. Um, give it the once over and once I've decided that this one's done I'm gonna um, proceed with the, uh, the the last few and the process is exactly the same so I'll put this into sort of super speed for you guys Okay, so gearing up for the second design, I grabbed um, a small uh, soap mold here, this little pink one. Um, you can see how many scraps I have left, and they're the, the two buckets sort of at the top um, of the screen, and there is another whole section um, in the loaf mold from the larger loaf. Um, so you can see here I'm slightly out of frame, but I am <laughs> stirring up the, uh, the remaining uh, clear soap base. And this is still, it's the same fragranced batch from, from the first time around. So um, I don't need to worry too much about whether it needs more scent. Um, but I am going to color it purple because this is what's going to go in to the little rectangular molds um, just on the side there. Because I, I want to make sure when I'm putting the um, the little crystal shards in that they're sort of anchored into something dark. So you, you kind of have the illusion that they've grown out of it. So like the purple bits are growing out of the purple bits, if that makes sense. To see the truth around you From a distance you can tell And so I'm going to fill these up uh, about halfway just to make sure that you know, once we start putting the crystal shards in there, it'll, you know, it's going to displace some of that soap and I don't want them to overflow. And if, if you don't have soap molds, you could do this again in another uh, quart sized milk carton. You could just do it as a, as a log and, you know, put them in there and then cut them up after the fact. Um, that should work just fine as long as you make sure to line them with uh, freezer paper. You can use basically any kind of mold you want. Um, if you have a small box or, you know, something that uh, cosmetics came in, anything that is sort of the size that you need it to be will work fine as long as you line it with freezer paper. And obviously I'm just kind of going through and, and putting them in somewhat randomly. Um, I'm picking a lot of the, the larger ones. I don't want, you know, one bar to end up with all the big ones and one bar to have all the tiny ones. Um, so I'm just mixing and matching as I go, um, you know, making sure that there's a mixture of ones with white tips and ones with, with, um, purple tips. And you can see, I just knocked that one over. So, um, you know, just grab my, my spoon I was stirring the soap with and, and scooch it back up again. And as you get more and more of these in the mold, they'll start to prop one another up. So it does kind of get easier as you go. Um, you know, again, my soap wasn't too hot, so as I'm sticking these in, they're not melting on the bottom, um, but they are, you know, they're firming up. There's like a little skin forming on the, on the top of the pour, um, so it, you do have to kind of work quickly here, but I will, um, I'll go ahead and speed up the rest of this because all I'm really going to do is, is put them in there, and when I get to a point where they're sort of tightly clustered, I'll go in with some of those more fine shards and fill it in. To be in the great outdoors, forever free. You and me, meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. 
Okay, and so as I'm finishing up here, um, I have a little bit of the melted purple left and, you know, I, the bars weren't coming all the way to the top. So I just decided to go ahead and pour in uh, the remaining amount and just kind of fill them up as much as I could um, and make sure we used all of the soap. to be in the great outdoors forever and here's some pictures of the final soaps all together i was uh, pretty pleased and like i said it was a lot of fun so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments and i'll be happy to answer any questions i'll leave you a list of all of my supplies um, plus a couple other places to get them, um, Amazon, Wholesale Supplies Plus, that sort of thing. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.